Love, as someone is encouraged, the, um, uh, um, the fruit is being prepared. Never give up on the soul. Never uh, uh, condemn someone to hell because their time might not be yet. Someone says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you, you find that. Now, <laughs> this man, for the blessing of having his eyes open, got into a lot of trouble. Now, finally, verse 17, finally they turn again to the blind man. Well, at this time, he's no longer blind. His eyes is open, but he's being described as a blind man. Verse 17, they said, what have you to say about him? Folks, I want us to read that together. What have you to say about him? Let's read that again. What have you to say about him? Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to turn around. Now ask your your neighbor this question. What have you to say about me? <laughs> I want I want us to dwell on this for a moment. Whether you are going to be an effective messenger of the gospel or not hinges on this question. They were asking this man this question, but I'm asking you that question. Everything hinges on that question. What have you to say? You no, know, Jesus at some point wanted to know what people were saying about him. And Peter came in with that revelation. You are the Christ. Amen? Amen. Now people are going to ask you, or I'm asking you this morning, what have you to say about Jesus Christ? Have you got a, a testimony? Have you got a word? Have you got something to show? What, have, what has he done? In your life, what has he done for you? Amen. What impact has the gospel made on your life? I thank God for the testimony, the night testimony that we listened to Sunday night. Very powerful. But what these guys, these night folks, were talking about was that this is the reason why they want to be baptized. Before I did them in water, they had to stand here and make a public declaration. Of the impact that the gospel had made on their lives. And I made them write that during their classes. I asked them to write their testimonies. The life before, their life before they were saved, what led to them being saved, and the impact or the testimony that they can <laughs> they are carrying before I would accept. If they are not clear about that, we don't say that we do not baptize them, but we lead them to Christ. The people have come to the discipleship classes and they've accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. Because they then come to understand why they are doing it. Amen? Amen. That is what we are talking about. And so we are dwelling on the question, what are you to say, folks? You're going to have to say something. You're going to have to carry a testimony. Amen? Amen. Praise His holy name. Amen. You're going to be able to tell people what Jesus Christ has done to you or has done for you. This is where the power of your personal testimony and your identification with him becomes very important. Now, can you say to me, Pastor, I have got a personal testimony. If you have, you have. But if you haven't, you haven't. Amen. Praise this holiday. And people who are going to be challenged. There, there, there are some sections of the society that you and I cannot touch. Because they have equal access to the NHS. They have, they, they are probably financially better than you. They've got better status. So what have you got to prove? The only thing that can touch them is your personal testimony. Amen? And they must see something in you to want whatever you have got. My Muslim neighbor knocked on my door. And listen, let's not put barriers to people. Let's, let's allow people to get closer to us. <laughs> he knocked on my door a couple of weeks ago. And he said, oh, I want to invite you to a meal. You know, they're putting out a meal. Would you come? I said, I would love to come. Folks, I will go anywhere. <laughs> not for the food. I can assure you. That. <laughs> Amen? Not for the food. But I look for opportunities like this as you see me doing this church. Just opening the church up for to just to meet people. I said, I would love to come, but you picked the wrong date. It was a Tuesday evening, and you know my heart for the prize.
prayer meeting and I don't want to miss. I said, you pick the wrong day, you pick the wrong time. But any time you are doing this, please invite me. I would like to. And he said, even to the mosque. And he knows I'm a minister of the gospel. <laughs> and I said, yes, even to the mosque. He said, really? I said, I would like to see your mosque. He said, yes. He said, they've got the biggest mosque in Europe. He said, it's what? It, it, it holds what? Uh, 20, 40,000 in, in modern? Somewhere. I said, I would like to come. Now, what he cannot do, I know this is going to go on YouTube, but I will say it anyway. You know, what, what, what he cannot do is he cannot stop me from sharing my testimony. Whilst I'm eating the, I'm eating the haram meat meal, and someone says to me, so you say you're a minister. I say, yes, I'm a minister. And I can say to them, even my grandmother is a Muslim. Even my auntie is a Muslim. And I'm having my name. But this is how I became a Muslim. Can you stop me? What am I doing? I'm sharing my testimony. Right. Amen. Amen. And I, I don't think anyone can stop me from praying over that meal in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I go charge myself up. You know, asking the angels of God to be around me, not in fear, but that I'll be sharp. Yes. Praise His holy name. Amen. Don't let anything stop you. Listen, don't pull down the boundaries. What have you got to say about him? This is what I've got to say about him. I was in chains. I was in chains. I was blind. I suffered from rheumatism. I stammered. And, and so on and so forth. I was timid. I was this. But now, I'm not. Make it simple. But powerful. But by. Mix with faith and the word of God. Because that person is looking at you and hearing, and they might be going through the same thing. You know, on Sunday night, as I prepare these guys for what I say to them, your testimony might be touching someone's life. He said, Pastor, I have a testimony. You have a testimony. I'm going to teach you how to do that. And when you're giving your testimonies, cut out the, un uh, the, the irrelevant factors. Amen? Sometimes people are giving their testimonies, and I wonder. What they are all about. They talk about healing, but now they, they talk about how that person turned up and they are wearing a bright shirt and then that bright shirt. This, 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 this. What has that got to do with the testimony? <laughs> Let's look at the testimony of this man. Once I was blind, now I can see. Praise be to this holy name. Let's get to the point. You know, instead of just preaching the gospel that is, uh, um, might not be relevant to the point or to the um, occasion. Hallelujah. Yeah. What have you to say about him? How well do you know Jesus Christ? What has he done for you? Does he love you? Has he given you peace? Has he brought uh, uh, peace in your marriage, into your situation? Since you got to know him, what has he done for you? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I love that old song. I think I sang it here not too long ago. Great change since I was born. Amen. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Great change since I was born. Has, is there a great change in your life? Or are you still tied down or tied back to the old ways? You know, that's the old scripture in your song. And we used to sing with, <laughs> with all our hearts. If there isn't a great change, if this man's eyes have not been opened, or if he was, uh, if his eyes were half open, he wouldn't have been as confident in front of the Pharisees as he was. What have you to say about him? Now, something practical. Know and rehearse your personal testimony. Write it down if you can. Be sure of your personal testimony. And make, back it up. And mix it with the word of God. And be ready at all times to give your personal testimony. Come with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. It will help. Um, would you like to open the door a bit? People are beginning to find themselves. Thank you. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Now, let's read that together. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Isn't that a beautiful question? That's a beautiful question. He said, who is going to harm you if you are eager to do, to do good? I can hear some of you still turning in your Bibles. It's 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. 
Who is going to harm you? 